right now we're all connected to 100,000 miles of high voltage cable crisscrossing the country. Without the national grid, we'd be plunged back into the dark ages. And you know what that means. No more telly. But fear not, there's a select group of death-defying men who keep us all in power. Meet the high-wire linesman with one of the most terrifying jobs in Britain. Whoa! Whoa! Without a doubt, one slip and you're dead. <laughs> There's days when you do get the heebie-jeebies, you know. <laughs> me, man. No one works on the wires until they've been to pylon school. These trainees are about to get their first lesson. The best place to get up close to massive voltages is a substation. Steve Barella and his classmates have to learn to handle 400,000 volts. There's some serious buzzing there, can't there. One full step here, and you're toast. Right, we're going to make live HP compound now. This is where it gets serious. Okay. Yep. You probably notice a lot of noise today because it's damp in the air. Um, nothing to worry about. If you see me running, then you need to <laughs> keep up. Their tour guide has one important message. If you're a chef, you might touch a pan and get a small burn. Touch a pan and get a big burn. If you get electrocuted, there is no little electrocution. They're all big. You don't have to touch it for it to get you. It jumps. 400,000 volts will flash through the air 10 feet. That bigger shock kills outright. I need to know that you understand this most definitely. Yeah. This it, will it, keep you alive. Right. Okay. There's some proper, proper power there. Proper power. You're always told from a kid, <laughs> don't go in them places. And then you actually stand there within, you know, five, ten metres of some great big proper electric shocks. Yeah. The entire national grid needs rewiring and the very first line to get a makeover crosses between England and North Wales. Right now, one side of this seven mile stretch is switched off. They've got six short weeks before the power's switched back on. You sure? Work begins next to Tower One where John McAllister marshals his gang. Repeat, and then just, you've got to choose the pullets on your neck. Yeah. Yeah. John's been on the lines nearly 20 years, and he's responsible for the lives of eight men. Like with, with my job, you know, me being his charge, and I've got to be aware of everything that's going around, you know. There's all different things that I've got to watch, you know. I've got to watch for the ropes, you know, I've got to watch people for what they do there, make sure they're doing the right things. Work can't start until the line is made safe. One half is still live and its power can jump to the side the men need to repair. To stop a fatal shock, the dead wires need to be earthed. I would say it's a pretty dangerous job, yeah. Pretty dangerous job. You've got to have a good head for heights. Rewiring Britain is going to take 10 years and will cost five billion pounds. To do it, the linesmen need reinforcements. Johns will come from amongst the fresh faces now at Pylon School. It's break time and an instructor is making the most of a quiet moment to play a little game. 
leaving five minutes early, isn't it? Steve and his fellow trainees don't know it yet, but the name of the game is hide and seek. It teaches them and trains them to check them that nobody's touched them. Every time we use them, we inspect them. Now you'll see if it works. Because then when the guys come in, if they don't do it, they'll leave you and me, they'll be in trouble and they won't be climbing. The trainees will spend most of their lives working in their harnesses. They need to know their gear intimately. Eight, four, seven. <laughs> Suitably attired, the big right. moment has arrived. If anyone's fighting at any point or any time, we stop what we're doing, make you comfortable and safe, and we'll talk to you, and we'll either get you down or we'll rescue you down. This is their first climb. The pylon stands 140 feet high. To stay on the course, the recruits have to make it to the end of the first arm. If anyone can talk the talk, out here walking the walk, and this is where it counts, because this is where they're going to spend the most of the majority of their life. OK, then. Yep, have a good climb, thank you. The instructors are watching every move. They can tell within seconds who's going to make the grade. Step inside, turn in and face me. That's it. You made it, you're there. I'll just stay there with you. You're right, yeah? Aye. Ah, have a few minutes, give a breath back and get started. I thought that lad was going to break it, but a big lad. Big. Hell, did he go? Oh, I thought we was going to have to run up the tower at one stage. Yeah. <laughs> hey, next guy in. It's make or break for Steve Barella. Yeah, that's you, but you're nice and steady. You see how you get a nice wee rhythm as you're climbing there? He climbed the tower quite well. He got it easy, he was, he was well away from the steel, he was fluent when he went up there, and then when he walked out of the arm, he did it with confidence. He's lucky he could he'd do it naturally. Steve has been here before. He used to be a pylon painter. They was doing the line in my village, and you, you see the difference between what we do and what they do, and I thought, well, I'd, I'd much sooner do that. You know, it looks harder, but you don't feel like a, a monkey, you know what I mean? You feel like you, you're doing something of some importance. If Steve's good enough, he'll join John's gang and he won't feel like a monkey anymore. And he'll be on his way to earning a thousand pounds per week. Not too shabby, but they earn every penny. This is your average electrician's nightmare. John has to replace thousands of tons of equipment, hundreds of feet in the air. Dodge. Come on, Dodge. Oh yeah. You Come on, Dodge. A lot of weight on this, Dodge. Happy there, Dodge. So, are you sure now you've got both of them on? Yeah, it's in. OK, watch yourself. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> that was a nutcase. <laughs> OK, Steve! Everything has to be hauled up before the old cables can be taken down. The trainees are going up in the world. Not many schools have a 12-storey climbing frame with a classroom right at the top. Right, you, three, you four listening. Right, the whole point of this exercise 
is just to show you how the tower's meant to give. You feel it going? Lesson two is the instructor's party piece. And I know I'm safe, right? OK? So all I'm going to do, I'm going to jump off. Right, that's me with nothing for what I'm on now. Confidence in all me, all me battles. OK? Once upon a time, there was no such thing as the national grid. Until the 50s, each local area generated its own electricity. The grid was intended to put an end to power cuts. The men who built it did so in wellies. Even a generation ago, accidents were common. So I've actually fell off three times. One of the times when I fell off, I landed in a bad wire and I bounced like a trampoline. And it just ripped all my arm all the way. Second time I fell off, I fell in a peat bog. And then the third time when I, done, I, done, I landed in trees. So I was actually someone up there looking after me. I've been, each time it's happened, I've been okay. Many people weren't so lucky. I've been to a few funerals. That's the ultimate price when somebody's on the floor, broken bones, not going home. The lads used to have a whip round for the wives because there was no insurances and things like that. Used to find it hard to get insurance for yourself because it was such a dangerous job. Today, the trainees are practicing rope rescue. Anyone left hanging for more than 20 minutes will die from suspension trauma. Don't worry about breaking the neck on the way down. Get in there. It's not just the dummy that gets them in a tangle. Look what I'm doing. Twist it over. Right, wrap it over the top. You need to put it on the steel first. Hey. <laughs> the next lesson is learning how to keep the wires apart. They're only 15 foot off the ground, but the instructors like to make the exercise as realistic as possible. You're under pressure now, boy! High wind blowing, you know! Adam and Not to dash. Some find it all too easy. <laughs> but for others, a little initiative is called for. Unfortunately, he's forgotten his tool. Finally, blushes are saved by revealing the trade secret. Only easy if you know how. And the trainees need to know all the tricks of the trade. Because tomorrow is exam day. It's 7.30 and John's heading off to work. It's safe to say he's not really a morning person. His gang have moved on to Tower 23. It's great to be back. <laughs> John's worried. Rain makes the steel slippery, and the top of a pylon is no place to lose your footing. Well, it's been very tight, you know. But as you can see, we're working in all conditions at the minute, you know. Um, but we've just got to get on with it. There's also a black cloud hanging over the pylon school. The trainees must pass their exams to carry the card. No card, no job. 
not academic in the slightest. Never even been one for academic. Sometimes I'll have to go straight out to work. I'll probably get my P45 in the office. <laughs> it's a lot to take in in, a, in an afternoon, or hopefully I'll, I'll get what I need and get my car. Back on the line, the gangs are still contending with the Welsh weather. For the next job, they need a temporary platform. I did have a one, one of these machines when I was working in Plymouth, and we're taking the platform up the outside. I was taking it up in third gear, you know, as I was going up and I'm watching up there, all of a sudden the platform just went whoosh, come flying down, and nearly hit the, uh, the bottom pot. So I'd be over here, whoosh, on with the handbrake, like, you know, on the platform just went doing. <laughs> But uh, that was a pretty hairy experience then, like. Keep it tough, Wally! Keep it tough, Wally! Is that level? Yeah. Robo! It's too heavy, that end! What? It's too heavy! More weight this end! Hey! It's too heavy! Oh, no, no. Move it over! It's a brilliant job in the summer, but in the winter, that's the worst job in the world. Worst job in the world. Freezing cold steel. Freezing up there, 150, 200 foot up. But that's where it sorts the men from the boys, you know? Men on the green now. The boys are going to get their results. All the weeks of intensive training have led up to this. 99%. Stephen Walton. Yeah. But you've passed. Oof. So far, everyone's passed. But for Steve, there's a surprise. Are there any more? Yeah. Oh, is that you, Stephen? I hope so. Oh, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, you may be wondering, what this is. Yeah. Right. This is a thing called a... Hodger. Hodger. Well done. Just check in. Now, the golden one is really a very special award, and it's very coveted. Um, this is the award for the best student on the course. And I'm very, very pleased and delighted to say that Stephen Barella, oh. in the judge's opinion, was the best student on the course. Thank you. Good lad. Good lad. That's it for Pylon School. Now it's the real thing. John and his gang have been working 17 days in a row. Once they've lowered this half-ton insulator, they get a couple of days at home. That's it, lads. Spot on. I keep my Oh, guess they're beautiful! I keep the ends up for the side What a team, what a team. Because you're mine, I walk the line. We're away for three weeks, and then we get a long weekend. But it's not, it's not long enough, you know, especially when you've got family. Well done, lads. Very, very easy to be true. OK, lads, down now, lads, for a cup of tea, lads. What a day, man, eh? Seven hours the lads have been up the tower. Nothing to eat. Just to get it finished. Now I had to see my friends and my family. My little boy. He was only seven. And there's another thing that John's really looking forward to. <laughs> when I get home, I kind of say that on camera, can I? <laughs> <laughs> because you're mine, I walk the line. The man with the golden podger is also going home. Have we had a good week? Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. Mm. All right, now you can make me a drink from there. Yeah, no doubt. Steve and Cheryl were childhood sweethearts. They know the new job will mean long periods apart, but at least his career's on the up.
I'm just so proud of him, yeah, because I know he's done well, and I knew he would do, because Stephen's one of these, or whatever he does, he'll put 110% in it anyway. So, well, yeah, I'm really proud of him. Very proud. For the whole class, graduation is a momentous achievement. And a good excuse for a little party. So as not to offend a family audience, we'll kiss them goodbye. The weekend may be over, but the job's far from done. John's gang faced the biggest challenge of all, the 1,500-foot crossing over the River Dee. At 320 feet, these pylons are twice as high as normal. And guess what? Steve doesn't know it yet, but he's been volunteered to make the first crossing. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Damien. mate? Same man I am. Hey, Pete. Damien. I'm Steve, mate. George, please, where are you? George. Oh, here you are. <laughs> John. John. Oh, all right, Damien. Damien. Nice to meet you, Damien. All right, all right. Oh, hey, I'll show you where the cattle is. <laughs> 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 this is the cattle. No, no George. problem. <laughs> Uh, well, that's where you start. That's where you start from, you know. Um, Alan Shearer cleaned Kevin Keegan's boots, you know. He had to start from somewhere. <laughs> Steve's moment of truth has arrived. We're just about to de space the river crossing, and this will be the first time I've ever done any de spacing. So, bear with me. Up in the sky, his chariot awaits. Yeah, it'll be an experience. Either, either it'll go well or it'll go terribly wrong. I can forward to climbing this, I must admit. Like a hole in the head. All eyes are on the new boy. Who promptly gets stuck? Thing. You Times like this, you wish you never smoked. I don't. <laughs> Before the old cable can be replaced, the spacers have to be knocked off. Now, where did Steve put that hammer? Um... Three hundred feet below, there's a boat on standby. As a rescue boat, I don't think there's 
I don't think I'd be able to rescue anybody if they fell off those trolleys. I don't think they'd survive, to be honest with you. I think it'd just be a matter of picking up the body, but uh, unless they were Olympic standard uh, divers, you know. I suppose the best we could do is mark them on their, their dive, you know. <laughs> you know, give them 9.9 .9 or something like that. He's made it halfway. Trouble is, from now on, it's all uphill. Tell you what this job needs? The Oxford rowing team. Yeah, it is the most dangerous job in Britain. I'd say so anyway, yeah. Cut the bait. Mental. I admire these guys up there. Heroes. Heroes. I couldn't climb up there. No money would get me up there. So, yeah, I think they deserve a medal for working up there, I think. <laughs> Hey, Steve. How are you? How are you, mate? Sound? How are you, mate? Hey, total you really respect. Is. You're your man, total respect. It is hard work, man. But I tell you what, that was quality, that, Stevie. In six weeks, John's gang have replaced seven miles of the line. So that's just another 22,000 pylons to rewire the country. Is this the most dangerous job in Britain? Do you want to talk, sir? What money you get? 150 foot over a road. 150 foot? Might be back at training school, Joe, innit? 150 foot. On Wednesday, meet the real men who paint the fourth bridge. It's very, very much a man's road. It's a man's, man's, man's road. And paint. And paint and paint. Stay with us here on BBC One Scotland. EastEnders is next. <laughs>